Cool, last little section of this chapter deals with both angular momentum and rotational kinetic energy, which we alluded to this guy already, if you recall. What was translational momentum or linear momentum equal to? Enemy. Good. And so in this case, we use the letter L to describe angular momentum. And instead of mass, in an angular or rotational sense, we have instead uh, moment of inertia. Instead of translational velocity, we have angular velocity. And so that's our angular momentum. So same thing with rotational kinetic energy. If you recall, what is translational kinetic energy? Cool, so rotational, we don't have m, we have, and we don't have v, we have omega, and that's rotational kinetic energy. And so if an object's actually rotating, and you know, hurling through the air and rotating, you actually have to add both of these to figure out its total kinetic energy. Cool, so a couple things. Uh, we talked about conservation of momentum with like collisions and stuff like that. So here we want to talk about conservation of angular momentum. So there's a cool little trick. And you've seen the bar stools that you know, kind of spin around and stuff like that. So let's say I take a wheel, so off a, t off a bicycle, have it on the spokes, and I spin that wheel, and I get it spinning like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in that lovely so, uh, bar stool. So if I turn it sideways, it's now going to, for the first time, have an angular momentum in a certain direction but the system didn't have an angular momentum operating in that direction before I turned it sideways. And so as I turn it, all of a sudden, if it's spinning this way, then the bar stool will start spinning the opposite way. That way the overall angular momentum still adds up to zero. So it's kind of a funky little trick and stuff like this. So, but we call it conservation of angular momentum. This is why the ice skater, so if they start spinning at constant angular velocity, so, but they crouch in, they lower their moment of inertia, and if they lower that moment of inertia for conservation of angular momentum, they're gonna increase their angular velocity. Yeah. So, and that's what question number eight is gonna deal with here. What about they go lower? Does it matter? Lower is lower's not such a big deal. Lower and higher is not such a big deal. Oh. So, and that might change their overall Y center of gravity and stuff like that, but it, it, it doesn't, doesn't change, change the angular momentum or anything like that. Nope. Right. So I just want to get closer to the axis of rotation to lower that uh, moment of inertia. So in this case, ice skater with a moment of inertia of 200 kilogram meter squared. So angular velocity is 10 radians per second. So by tucking in her arms and legs, her moment of inertia increases to 125 kilogram meters squared. And the question is, what is her resulting angular velocity? And essentially, we're just going to say conservation of angular momentum, I omega equals I omega, initial, final. We know three out of four will solve for that final why angular velocity. So why is it conserved? So same way when we dealt with collisions, you remember when we dealt with conservation of momentum okay. as well? Now it's just kind of like rotational momentum, but same thing, same thing. Yep. Good, 16 radians per second. Cool. All right, question number nine can be fun or not fun, depending on how you look at it. Uh, we have a, a wheel rotating uh, with an angular velocity of 40 radians per second. We're gonna hit it with a brake. That brake is gonna apply a thousand Newton force, or at least it's gonna result in a thousand Newton force, not directly on the wheel, but the force it results is due to friction, right? And it's gonna be exactly opposite the tangential velocity. So in every case. So because at every point uh, as it hits this wheel, the force generated by friction technically is exactly opposite the velocity, the instantaneous velocity, it's gonna be negative work. And it's slowing this wheel down. So in this case, we know the force is 1,000 Newtons. We know uh, the diameter of this wheel is 20 centimeters, which means we know the radius is? Uh, 10, centimeters. 10 centimeters. So we also are given the moment of inertia for this wheel is 50 kilogram meters squared. And the question is how much work is performed by the brake to bring the wheel to a complete stop from an initial angular velocity of 40 radians per second. Mm -hmm. 
It's a ton of info given here. So, remind me, what's the definition of work, the standard definition that you guys learned back in the day? The force times T. Yeah, force times displacement with cosine theta if it's not perpendicular. So, in this case, I'm sorry if it's not parallel. Uh, in this case, we are going to have them being anti-parallel, so I'm not going to have to worry about the cosine theta part. It just makes it negative in this case. Uh, in angular, we don't deal with force, we deal with torque. And we don't deal with linear displacement, we deal with angular displacement. And that's our definition for work. So could we figure out the torque? Yeah, in this case, if I take another view of this brake, so if this thing's rotating around this way, the brake is applying a force exactly perpendicular from the axis of rotation, if you will. And so, yeah, I could calculate a torque, force times lever arm, okay. So could I calculate the angular displacement? Well, I know the initial. So I could use the torque I know. So, and the moment of inertia to calculate the angular I don't know how to calculate that. How to calculate this guy right here? The delta theta? That's what I'm asking you. How are we going to get that? So, and the question is, so I know the initial velocity. Mm -hmm. So if I knew the acceleration, the angular acceleration, we could get there. Do I know a way to get the angular acceleration? Because notice, what if I told you that this thing slowed down 10 radians per second per second? Yeah. If it slowed down 10 radians per second per second, how long would it take to stop completely? Total. Yeah, if it was four. four seconds, great. So if I knew that angular acceleration, I could figure this out. Mm -hmm. So do I have a way to get that angular acceleration? To stop from the initial So we know the So we know the initial is 40, final zero, but to get the angular acceleration, some of the torques equals I alpha. I have the force and the lever arm distance to get the torque. Moment of inertia is given, all this stuff. Cool, so yeah, we could eventually get there and we could totally calculate work by torque times that we're not going to. I just wanted to point out that we could and that would be the long way to do this. So in this case, what kind of energy does this wheel have initially? Uh, rotational. Rotational kinetic energy. Once it stops, does it still have rotational kinetic energy? No. no. Where did that energy go? It goes to. It was work performed by the brake to uh, stop it. And so if you recall this lovely equation, your net work on an object is equal to the change in its kinetic energy. And that's what we're going to use here. So in this case, the, work, the only work done is by the brake, so the work net is the work of the brake, and this is a much easier calculation. So in this case, what's the final kinetic energy of this wheel? Uh, that will be the half mv Ooh, the final after it stops. Oh, then zero. Zero. Cool, so final minus initial, and the initial would be the one half i omega initial squared. Cool. Forty squared is sixteen hundred times a half. Eight hundred, eight hundred times fifty. Yeah. Awesome. I lost. No, it's totally, it's totally negative. Yep, I lost my negative sign. Negative forty thousand joules. Great. We would have got the same answer if we did it the other way. It would have just been a lot more work.